Well, joining us this morning here at ABC 15, we've got the U.S. Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue. Welcome to the desert, sir. Thank you, Dan. It's been a great visit so far. I, I know you've gotten to see some of our uh, more rural parts. <laughs> Phoenix, the big sprawling metro, uh, but Arizona is quite a rural, agriculturally based state. Uh, did that surprise you coming out here to the desert? Well, it did to some degree. Obviously, being from the southeast, I'm used to trees and green everywhere. So, but you've got desert here, but you've got some beautiful agricultural areas in some of those areas where water is available, and we saw some of those yesterday. Let's talk a little bit about that. Arizona has 25 million acres of farmland. Mm -hmm. So obviously what happens in Washington, D.C. that impacts farmers Certainly. is of great concern to our yeah. farmers here in Arizona. I read uh, what you had stated a couple of days ago, how the new tax plan will hopefully benefit Certainly. Main Street, but also farmers and those in the agricultural industry. How so? How can we expect the tax plan to help us here in Arizona? Well, no question about it. Uh, many people think of farming as a lifestyle, but farming also has to be a business. If they don't make a profit, they can't stay in business, obviously, to continue farming. Our farmers are very productive, but they're paying way too much and giving back to the government to way too much. So these pass through for small businesses. It will affect them as well, uh, as well as the death tax. That's probably the most hated tax among farmers because every farmer really wants to pass their land uh, down to their children. And with land appreciation sometimes, the, the kind of the unfunny joke is that farmers live poor and, and die rich. And that the estate tax hits them. They've already paid money on that uh, money one time and they get hit again at their death. Okay, yeah, and they appear as these large businesses when in fact, like you said, they're passing along land and, and, right. and farming. Um, uh, let's talk about some more about the labor needs because obviously mm -hmm. I'm from a small uh, rural town in southeast Arizona, sure. a lot of workers needed. Um, there are yeah. hundreds of thousands of those who are here on a temporary basis. We know there are illegal workers in the state of sure. Arizona as well. Um, that may be a Department of Labor question, but also for the Department of Agriculture. How do we meet the labor needs uh, in Arizona, considering the current climate with the border wall and with various things happening in our nation's capital? Well, it's a huge issue for farming. Uh, most of our workforce in agriculture is foreign born. Mm -hmm. And I think the president would love for us to see a legal workforce in agriculture. He understands the difference. Obviously, he's committed to get the criminal element of illegal, uh, undocumented people out of the country. I agree with him on that. But farming would be very difficult, certainly in Arizona, with the high-touch type of produce and vegetables, be very difficult there. And it's very important to Arizona, but it's also important to, to dairymen in the Northeast mm -hmm. who use uh, that kind of labor year-round. So as well as my state in Georgia and Florida in the vegetable industry as well. So we've got to have a plan. Uh, uh, Representative Goodlatte, the chairman of the judiciary, has a plan there, and we're hoping that we can get certainly a legal workforce for agriculture. Perhaps you answered this in part, but I've, you know, talked to farmers down in the southeast corner of the state who have really uprooted their entire operation to go to Mexico, yes. not just bringing in workers from no. Mexico, but they said we can't get enough workers. We're now taking our entire operation there. Is that of concern when farmers just kind of toss up their hands and say, we don't have the workers we need? we got to take our, our establishment elsewhere. We see that happening more and more, and it is of concern. Obviously, it's also of concern because of NAFTA, and they're concerned right. when they go to Mexico, what, what are going to be the rules going on NAFTA? So uh, as we renegotiate NAFTA, we're hopeful that we'll get a, a good, fair agreement because it's very important, obviously, to the, to the U.S. agriculture, certainly important to Arizona. I think Arizona is one, one of the top states of, uh, of uh, dealing with Mexico. It being a border state, obviously, yeah. it's a huge... Uh, trade opportunity for Arizona. It's something to the effect of uh, seven to ten million dollars a day mm -hmm. spent by, that's just people coming to Arizona right. to shop and to do business and then they go back. That's kind of a different question as far as the trade back and forth of the agriculture as well. But how do you feel the, the perception is with that as far as trades and goods going back and forth between our state and Mexico, certainly like you said, a huge uh, focus of right. our state's economy. Moving forward, do we have a good enough relationship there so that the goods and ex uh, the goods and services can be exchanged easily between our country and Mexico? Well, we certainly have from an agricultural perspective. Early on, I invited the Secretary of Agriculture from Mexico as well as the uh, Minister from Canada to come to uh, my home state, and I showed them the trade aspect on the ports there, and we acknowledged all the things we've done. The challenge comes, Dan, from the... Uh, auto and automotive industry, that's where the trade deficit, which President Trump is very concerned about, uh, it comes from. Agriculture in all three countries has benefited. Mexico, U.S., and Canada have benefited from that. 
there are some things, irritants, that need to be corrected, like the Canada dairy issue and keeping some of our products out. But overall, we have a lot in common with Mexico regarding trading. Now, some of the vegetables, fruits and vegetables come in and hurt some of the, the growers in South Florida and South Georgia there early on with their seasonality. Most of it has to do with countercyclical growing seasons. They're in more of a uh, climate that allows them to have an earlier, uh, earlier harvest. Right, free trade uh, benefits uh, everybody who wants their different fruits and vegetables no, all right. year, all yeah, year that's, long. As consumers, we've gotten used to great fruits and vegetables 12 months out of the year. And that's what, that's what facilitates that. That's why we consumers demand that. That's why some of those growers are going to Mexico and, and, and operating there because of the labor and really it's less hassle than trying to bring labor in here. Is it difficult when you go around to different parts of the country, again, satisfying those needs because you do have the worldwide impact of trying to market your product, but at the same time, you want to keep as much of your operation in the United States as possible and have the workforce. Well, that's that the get. challenge President Trump is facing, and that's the challenge that Ambassador Lighthizer in renegotiating, modernizing the NAFTA agreement, right. understanding that some sectors of our economy have benefited, agriculture right. being one, yeah. automotive, steel, and others, uh, not so much. And uh, we, we generated a huge deficit, trade deficit with Mexico of autos and auto parts coming back in. He's determined to correct that, but how do you do that in a way that doesn't damage the parts that have been affected positively? Yeah, Senator Flake has talked a lot about that, kind of listing the agricultural benefits for us in yeah. Arizona, so we'll be watching that closely. Sure. Um, you've been doing this listening tour. What are the things that you have heard from uh, the agricultural sector in the United States as you travel around? What's the biggest concern? Well, they're probably trade, we've talked about, labor, farm labor. Regulations are, are probably the top three that I hear almost in every sector. From the north, we've been to the northeast and to the Massachusetts, sitting on a porch there in Massachusetts, same type of issues, trade, immigration, labor, and uh, regulation. And obviously, we've been very aggressive in trying to remove the regulatory burden that we've, uh, farmers have been placed under over a number of years. And we heard a lot about that yesterday at, uh, at Director Killian's uh, home when he brought producers in. And they gave me a good example of some of the, uh, really the, onerous type of regulations they have to comply with. Yeah. Did, did they talk about water issues? Because that's another one I wanted to mention is um, a lot of uh, areas, we know the Navajo Nation here that's within uh, the general boundaries of the state of Arizona benefited right. uh, from federal grants to help uh, with natural disasters strike. Sure. Oh, obviously, yeah. water critical in the state of Arizona. Water is important, obviously, through rural development in smaller communities. We work with small communities and with the tribes in getting, helping to get the infrastructure for water. That's another thing that the president's uh, got us on is an infrastructure. I think once we see this tax bill pass, then uh, we'll be on to infrastructure, which we understand we've got crumbling infrastructure. We've got inland waterways. We've got highways. We've got rail. And the other thing we need in rural America is broadband because uh, uh, precision agriculture needs it sociological kids in rural areas need it. They, they're not going to go to town and start to, you know, uh, playing on their computers and go right. back home and not have access. So uh, we, for the demographic changes, we need to keep kids in these towns. The precision equipment is incredible when yeah. those tractors oh, turn on a dime. It's amazing. And uh, I, I was in a manufacturing facility of a sprayer, ag sprayer company the other day. They're talking about optics where they identify uh, the specific noxious weed and just spray that one specifically. Wow. You think about how better that is for the environment, how fewer inputs we need, and uh, how much better it'll be productively. The tech sector and the ag sector That's right. combining. Yeah. <laughs> right. You really, you see Silicon Valley investing a good bit of money in agriculture today. Yeah. Food's important, Dan. No question about yeah. it. Yeah. Secretary Perdue, thank, thank you thanks very so much. Thanks thank for you, coming Dan. to Arizona. Thank we you, appreciate sir. the visit. Great visit. Thanks.